Hello, everybody, and welcome to one more hour of our webinars in Neurometrics. Today, we are going to be talking about our auto scan product, so the digital ear scanning system that we have. Before we start the webinar, I want to introduce you to our presenter, and today our presenter is Dr. Don Kim. Uh, he's, uh, he's one of our, our geologists in uh, Autometrics and works uh, especially right now with, uh, he's not a field developer at anymore. I'm sorry about that. That's my mistake. And he's working dedicated on the Autoscan. And uh, my name is Mariana Roslin Jensen and I'm uh, the education and training manager at Autometrics. So just a little bit of housekeeping. All the participants are mute, and this is due to reduce background noise. It's possible to ask questions. So if you look on your right side of your screen, you will see a box that says questions. Please write your questions there. And I will, uh, in the end of the webinar, when we finish uh, the presentation, I will select some questions and ask Don. Uh, if we have too many questions, we're probably not going to be able to to answer all of them, but I promise you that we will contact you directly. We have your emails. I will contact you directly with an answer. If you have any problems, please uh, write a message to me also through the system. I will be able to read that and, uh, and try to help you through. So now I want to welcome uh, Don. Uh, he will be our presenter today. I'm going to give him the screen. Let's thank see you, if it Mariana. works. And welcome, Don, and thank you for participating here with us. Thank you. Good morning here in the U.S. and wherever you are. Um, yeah, thank you for joining us, guys. Um, this has been uh, an exciting time to be a part of Autometrics, um, and we believe that we have a very interesting revolutionary technology on our hands. And what I'd like to do today is kind of go over some of the uh, some of the features of, of the device, but also some of the benefits and why you would want to introduce digital ear scanning into your workflow, um, into your practices and businesses, uh, and some of the benefits that you guys can see from it. So. Um, I, uh, my previous role, Mariana was correct, I was uh, a field development audiologist um, for the Eastern United States. And uh, this year I transitioned into a market development role uh, for North America for Otoscan. And so I, uh, my primary role is to help bring Otoscan to the North American market um, and help find uh, good avenues um, to, uh, to utilize Otoscan here in the US. So what I'd like to do first is talk a little bit about our company uh, prior to going uh, going uh, directly into Autoscan, and our our company um, Autometrics has been a world leader in hearing aid fitting for quite some time. Uh, if you look at the product mix and when we consider the revenue in 2016, we really focus a lot of energy on hearing aid fitting. However, as you can see, the other avenues um, of products that we have. We have quite a diverse selection for any hearing and uh, balance related uh, diagnostic tools. And right, there we go. And this slide shows the progression and the development of um, and the history of Otometrics. Uh, which was formed in 2001. However, our lineage goes all the way back to Paul Matson um, leaving Bang Olufsen um, and producing audiometers in the 1950s. And if you look all the way up to the right, uh, you can see that uh, you can you can see that Natus has uh, has a role where Natus acquired Otometrics from GN um, in 2017, and that's uh, that's actually quite significant for us. Uh, because we were under the GN umbrella, we couldn't quite be as free and, and collaborating with some of the hearing aid manufacturers uh, from a non-biased non uh, point of view until we were acquired by uh, GN. So that helps us develop technologies that can then be used for, um, for essentially the entire big six uh, hearing aid manufacturers. And uh, for instance, the Otoscan, but also for uh, real ear fittings, we have automated verification that we have uh, um, 
partnered with uh, all the manufacturers for. And here's our product portfolio. We create products that uh, provide solutions to, to some, of your, uh, some of the uncertainties in the market currently. Um, and we'll address some of the uncertainties in our, in our profession in the hearing aid industry right now and, and, and talk about how Otoscan can help position your providers, position your clinics and your businesses uh, to help weather some of the storms, but not just survive, but also thrive in these environments and find opportunities in these environments as well. Um, another, another product that, in my opinion, uh, will, uh, will help a lot of businesses is Otobase. Otobase is... Um, and uh, it helps integrate um, a lot of your diagnostic devices into EMRs and, and, and creates EMR connectivity. Um, and that's, that's something that Otometrics will focus on here uh, in the next few years. So the history of digital ear scanning. How did we get to this point? Well, in, uh, in, the, early, in the early, uh, 2000s, um, the Navy created a grant um, for 3D printing of hearing protection on the US Navy on these ships for warfighters, because they realized it, the workflow was quite um, cumbersome where they had to create silicone ear mold depressions when they were off base and then you know, ship them out and then ship them back on. It took quite some time. So they created a grant uh, for individuals, uh, for whoever wanted to, um, to provide 3D digital ear scanning technology so that the Navy could then scan the ear directly and then print on their ships. Essentially what the Navy was looking for was an optimal process for creating custom devices. And what this did was this ended up uh, generating some technology by a man named Carol Hatsilius from Georgia Tech who uh, already had a 3D technology um, in, his, in, his, uh, in, his, in his lab that, that he just repurposed into um, the ears. So he ended up scanning, creating a device um, called the EFIT through United Sciences. And that's what uh, he ended up creating through this grant. Now, if you look at the traditional workflow for the Navy, there's this huge loop where you start with silicone impressions. Uh, <laughs> if you're on the ship, then you have to either wait till you, uh, till you port or you have to fly them out and then somebody has to scan the ear molds and then sculpt and then produce the final product and then the manufacturer has to then somehow get it back onto the ship. This is not efficient and uh, this, is, this is definitely not in the best interest of your warfighters. So the idea behind this entire custom workflow um, and digitizing it was to eliminate the entire shipping side of things. And so what they ended up doing is they ended up using um, they ended up using a, uh, a scanner and a printer and printing devices uh, directly. And that was a very efficient process. Now there's another industry that utilizes similar processes uh, right now, and that's the dental industry. Now, the dental industry has had scanning technology for quite some time. Um, and initially uh, when scanning technology came about, um, the x-ray devices or, uh, or even you know, peripheral um, uh, outside of the body, um, because x-rays inside of the body scanning, uh, the outside of the body or intraoral scanners, um, they ended up utilizing it to initially to separate their business from others who couldn't afford it or didn't want to purchase it. And what ended up happening is they found a, a, an immensely uh, optimized workflow as a result. Um, so this is what we're suggesting in hearing aid clinics as well. And what we do is ideally we eliminate the entire front end shipping so the turnaround for products is a lot quicker and, and somewhat cheaper as well. So if we, if we look at this process um, when we scan, we'll talk about this a little bit, uh, all the scans that you create with our Otoscan go to the cloud. And this cloud-based server houses all these scans. Um, this is where you can actually decide, okay, I have the scan, I'm gonna send it to um, Earmold Lab A, so I can create swim plugs. I'm gonna go send it to hearing aid manufacturer B, so I can create CICs. Um, I'm, gonna call, I'm gonna send it to Earmold Lab C, um, so I can get hearing protection. 
And you can do all of that with one scan, which is very efficient as well. You don't have to get, you don't, you don't have to create three sets of ear mold impressions like you used to. Um, for, and the patient's actually much more satisfied. <coughs> Excuse me. So what are some changes? What's happening today? And why is this relevant? Um, there's a lot going on. And every time I speak with professionals about what's, what they, what they, you know, what they're concerned about the most or what they find exciting, um, it's, it's, it's all over the place. And there's a lot of things on, um, a lot of things on their minds right now. And one of the, one of the focus areas for, um, here at healthcare providers right now is how do you stay professional, um, and in, in an environment, an ecosystem that's going to try, that's going to eventually become heavily commercialized. And how do you separate yourself a little bit from those types of centers if you want to? Um, and how do you create best possible outcomes for patients? Uh, don't sacrifice patient experience, oh, patient experiences. And how do you stay competitive in this changing environment? So on the bottom box, you'll see some trends that we've listed here. Um, these, there's definitely a lot more, but these are some of the ones that are, that are very common. Um, and so baby boomer population is increasing and uh, healthcare is definitely changing because of that, uh, especially here in the United States. Um, and I think everywhere in the world, we're encountering uh, some, uh, some, uh, some fear over over-the-counter hearing aids as well. And I think that's an opportunity for us to position ourselves a little bit differently as well. Um, our ASP will shrink as a result because over-the-counters will traditionally be uh, lower cost options. And, um, and a lot of practices in medicine, regardless of the industry, are, are attempting to digitize the entire patient journey so that they can actually use data and big data and learn more from it and then be able to provide better services to their patients in the long run. So I understand that there are a lot of global um, friends on the call here today. Um, I pulled some numbers uh, from the US um, in terms of customs mix versus other types of hearing devices. And in 2011, over on the very far right pie chart, you can see that uh, ITEs, ITCs, CICs, and even BTEs uh, that require some, uh, oftentimes that might require some custom ear molds, um, had quite a large mix in, uh, in, the, in the dispensing of hearing devices. Um, just five years later, you can see that the RIC and uh, the right um, category uh, almost doubles in terms of its, uh, uh, its, 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 its um, market, I guess, market penetration in terms of how many RICs were, per, um, were purchased and, and dispensed. So a lot of individuals, a lot of practices are getting away from customs um, because, you know, it's, it's obvious. RICs are easy to fit um, in terms of purchasing. You can actually leverage, leverage, uh, leverage volume purchases so you can get cheaper prices. Um, and, you know, it's highly interchangeable and you can replace the receiver. There's a lot of benefits to RICs. And so, so over time, we've slowly gone away from uh, a lot of the customs mix uh, that we're, we've, you know, we've actually dispensed for quite some time. And there's a couple of byproducts that I think that we see from this is, is uh, a lot of the students that are coming out of these programs in schools, um, what, I've, what I've personally observed and what I've also heard from professors is that they are not as comfortable making ear mold impressions uh, anymore, as as we used to uh, back in the days, and uh, that that's if that loss of skill set alone, or that hesitation, or that uncertainty in making ear mold impressions alone, will um, will reduce the number of customs, uh, and it'll prevent um, providers from going to the customs mix, uh, regardless of whether or not the technology is ideal for the customer, and that's 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 a, not a good place we want to be. Um, and what we think, you know, with the whole OTC market uh, uh, coming coming to play here, is that we need to be able to position our practices and our offerings quite a little bit differently. Um, I got this slide uh, that shows the uh, average sales price throughout the years, and uh, it generalizes the um, the product mix or the product categories in, in high level, mid level, and low level technology. And you can see a steady increase um, in, 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 terms of, uh, in terms of pricing, but not abnormal. Uh, what, you, what you will observe here is that 
you know, the, uh, the effect of a, uh, o, OTCs will drive ASP down quite a bit by introducing a fourth category, the OTC. Um, and what you'll also see is that the OTC price point will be quite low um, traditionally. And how do we, because most of the products that we dispense currently are RICs and rights. How do we justify to our patients um, that there is a difference in technology, that you should be paying $2,000 per hearing device versus you know, $250 when the form factor, when the, the actual look of the hearing device is very similar? And so that's what, that's what is difficult um, when, when we just stick with one form factor and then there's a disruptive technology that comes in and we don't have other options to be able to separate ourselves. So that's, that's why a lot of, a lot of uh, industry experts and manufacturers and even myself, I believe that um, custom products will be on the rise here in the next few years, uh, just because I, we, I feel, need to uh, be able to offer a more personalized and customized solution to our patients. Uh, that, that is easy for them to understand that there is more involved into fitting this customized hearing device than, than just a, like an off-the-shelf OTC device. So this is, uh, I'll, I'll briefly go over the slide. This is um, uh, an article from BCG, Boston Consulting Group, which is um, one of the more uh, world-renowned consulting groups. And they talk about pers uh, personalization and, and businesses that personalize the patient experience or patient journey um, using different integrated technologies um, and to, to cater to that particular patient uh, see on average about a 10% increase in revenue. So the idea is to personalize and customize the entire offering uh, to your patients as well. Now, obviously, we're not saying customs for everybody, but I think we've gotten away from customs uh, over the years, and um, a, a lot of these, a lot of these instances when we've gotten away from customs was not in the patient's best interest, and and that's you know that's that's the way uh, that's the way cookie crumbled. But uh, I think we will see the custom mix coming back. So here's another reason why um, digital ear scanning, in my opinion, will uh, will it will help everybody in our industry. And one of the main reasons uh, we get remakes is because of poor impressions. And I, I got these um, I got these slides uh, I got these pictures from a gentleman from a hearing aid manufacturer, and he says this is more common than we think. Um, now, everybody, uh, when I speak with audiologists and dispensers, everybody says, oh, I, my, my ear roll depressions are always perfect, are always perfect. And, you know, I, I, I agree, we're probably good, but uh, um, we, the hearing aid manufacturers see these types of impressions way too often. And uh, the quality control is quite bad. So that's why remake rates are, uh, you know, anywhere between 15 to 20 percent for, uh, for hearing aid manufacturers generally. Um, and so the one on the bottom right, that's, uh, th that's the one that really scares me, the blow-by. In terms of liability, uh, as, as hearing aid care providers, blow-bys are definitely the, uh, the biggest liability that we have going in. And we'll talk a little bit about how Otoscan will mitigate that. And here's some other images of um, impressions. <clears throat> so Otoscan. Otoscan is a, is a system that will help digitize this entire um, ear mold impression taking process. It actually uses lasers and lights inside the ear canal to uh, render and stitch a live uh, scan, a 3D scan, that can then be sent to the manufacturers to have an immediate hearing device made. The, the file that we're creating in the ear is called an STL file. And that is actually the file that hearing aid manufacturers create when they take your silicone impressions in, putting in their 3D scanning box, and then they scan your ear mold impression to then create the product, which is the traditional workflow. That, that's the STL file that they're creating. What we're doing and we're proposing um, is creating that STL file directly in the ear so that we bypass that entire front end process. And so the system currently includes a scanner, a dedicated laptop, um, and it's dedicated and locked down so that we can uh, uh, we can 
take all the resources, all the video processing resources from the computer and, and make sure the scanner works properly. And um, we have the Oda Cloud as well, um, where we have scan management capability and sending files to uh, whichever manufacturer. But when we think about OtoScan, a lot of people think about it as a silicone replacement, but it's so much more than that. In our trials, what we've re realized is that OtoScan can do so much more for your business than, than just replace the silicone process. So let's talk about some of the key features that help us do that. We have on the handheld a touch screen and, and a live in-ear view. So there's a, an actual otoscopic view. Um, and on the left side of that screen, you'll see uh, of the actual um, handheld, you'll see this, uh, this bar that goes all the way up. And there's a blue portion, there's a green portion, a red portion. That's the depth gauge. That's how we assure that you hit the proper and appropriate depth in the ear canal, but also don't go too far. And on the right side, you'll see that the actual live in the ear stitching is occurring as you're in the ear canal. Um, at, with, the, with the entire system, training is a consideration because this is an entirely new process. Uh, this is an industry first, in my opinion, where, we, where we've seen a gamified training application um, uh, take you from intro, introduction to OtoScan all the way to in-ear scanning. And it actually scores your progress and it tells you how you're doing. And, and, and ideally, you know, anybody that you hire in your clinics, if you have new providers, they can go through this training application without having to necessarily uh, pay for um, an automatic, automatic audiologist every single time you hire somebody new. And so that's, uh, that's one of the great features of the system here. So the application has multiple lessons uh, and it goes through quite a bit, okay? So what are some of the obvious benefits? For the provider, they're quite substantial. Uh, and the organiz organization, they're quite substantial. Um, for the organization, if you have multiple offices, if you have multiple providers and multiple uh, types of providers, audiologists versus technicians uh, versus dispensers, with the OtoScan and impression taking, you can actually have a consistent standard of care for that impression taking process. Um, and it actually promotes quality control as well. And the biggest liability like that we had that I mentioned earlier is in ear mold impression taking. And this, this helps mitigate that quite substantially. Um, if, they, if we can see that they hit target depth and uh, target depth is based on normative data on ear, uh, ear canal length, but also how long hearing aid manufacturers want those scans uh, to be able to produce whatever, whatever hearing device you want, you know, we're, we're providing the best possible start to the patient's journey in, in terms of hearing aid fitting. And this will become best practices. In my opinion, digital ear scanning is best practices just because um, uh, for the patient, it's more comfortable. Um, it's reducing remake rates. Um, it's actually quicker turnaround time and you get better, more accurate uh, processes all around. And the other thing is, you know, with, with the OtoScan, you, uh, you get reduction of human error as well through that process. Um, when, I, when, I, when I talk about reduction of human error, I used to own a private practice. And I know, you know, when you get the phone call and say, hey, uh, we lost your ear mold impressions, or um, it got lost in the mail, or we can't read your handwriting, so we need you to send another order form in. And all of these, all these, all these little components uh, end up dragging down the business in the clinic quite a bit, um, and ends up compromising patient care as well. One of the one of the trials that we did in house um, on on uh, on the Otoscan, one of the biggest uh, responses that we got from patients was that there was a massive wow factor involved. When when the clinician scanned their ear, they had a, they had the patient watching this entire process the patients actually said there was a massive wow factor. And that wow factor is definitely uh, um, something that the patient will remember um, throughout their process, especially this day and age when they go from one clinic to another to see if they can get a better price or see if they like the other individual better. This sets a professionalism for that clinic um, that's, that's, you know, because it's not widely adopted yet, that there's an, where there's an opportunity for most clinics to actually um, uh, 
get that immediate wow factor from the patients. Now for surgical ears, this I, I've actually scanned several mastoid ears with the Otoscan, and that actually ended up um, surprised me quite a bit. And it's a much much more co uh, comfortable for the uh, for the uh, customer for the patient. But I didn't realize that it was going to be that easy. <laughs> um, uh, one of the considerations for mastoid ears is that uh, if they have repaired the eardrum or if they've um, uh, put a skin graft on and, and you don't know the actual depth of the ear canal relative to the location of the TM, um, the depth gauge is something that you should take um, uh, with a grain of salt and, and, and use your own professional judgment there. Okay. So we do show that we have, uh, we have shown that we have lower remake rates with Otoscan. Um, and so with this technology, by having an actual depth gauge where almost every provider, if they reach depth gauge, you're, if they reach the uh, target depth, um, signified by this green area on the bar there, uh, you are consistently scanning four to six millimeters past the second bend. And any, every time I show hearing aid manufacturers how long every single scan is, they say, man, we can create any product with this, an IIC, CIC, whatever. And then you're really starting off on the right foot. Um, the other thing is for counseling for the, cut, for the provider, you can actually take a look at the, ear, uh, the scan. You can spin the scan around and see whether or not um, an IIC would fit potentially using your own uh, judgment or whether or not a wireless technology would fit in a very tiny ear canal. Now. Um, so you can use those to help counsel and to help guide, add, guide and steer your customers into the right direction. So the remake rates uh, in, in one of the trials that we saw um, was down to 8% um, for one of the hearing aid manufacturers out of, a, out of 196 orders. Um, traditionally, their remake rate was anywhere between 15 to 20%. What that means is that sells up, uh, that frees up a lot of time for you guys, uh, for the provider and for the organization to do other things. Um, whether or not that's, you know, scheduling more appointments or, um, uh, or doing more revenue generating activities, you know, these remake appointments where these patients come back in to get more ear mold impressions made or um, uh, new ear mold impressions made, it really ends up tracking down the uh, bottom line of your business as well. So the target depth, the average male target depth is 16 to 18, uh, females 14 to 16, uh, based, based on the lit reviews that Wayne Staub did and based on hearing aid recommendations. And to the sake of time, I'll, I'll speed this up a little bit. But um, so in terms of uh, the trial that I mentioned earlier, 92% um, of patients reported excellent to good comfort uh, during this entire scanning process. 94% of patients report scanning has a wow factor, and 74% of patients report that it's better than the silicone impression process. Now, remind you, um, the providers that were part of this trial, they were all new scanners. And so for somebody to report that there's 74% of, uh, for 74 of patients to report that it's better than silicone impression process, and 92% to say that it's um, excellent or good comfort, well, that's pretty impressive. So that tells us, you know, there is a learning curve. I will admit there's a learning curve with, this, uh, with learning how to scan, but it's, it's a very steep learning curve. And, it, and you, once, you, once you get it, it's really, I mean, you really don't lose it. And then you be, really become an expert really quickly. Um, I have, I have a customer here in the States that uh, purchased one, and within a matter of two weeks, uh, his scans were immaculate. Uh, it, it was a very impressive to see how quickly he, um, he gained that skill set. This is from the actual um, dispensers and audiologists that used the device. 70% 70, 70 said um, they had success in actually reaching target depths and they had no gaps in um, gaps or holes where you weren't able to scan. Only 7% uh, had difficulties, uh, and this is expected. You know, it's a new technology. It requires some hand-eye coordination, so we're not, we're not expecting everybody to get it right off the bat, but the 70, I mean, if three-quarters of the population, um, three-quarters of the dispensing population get it within the first couple, within the first month or so of this trial, um, that's actually not too bad, and we know that's, uh, that's only going to get better. 74% success in utilization of the scanning system meaning from scanning all the way to placing an order with the manufacturer, um, they, they've, they, they had success. So the patient says it's great, 
the Spencer says it's great, but how 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 is this going to actually help your business? Well, we really truly believe that um, this product will attract new patients to your door, but also it'll help convert the existing patients and help retain those patients that are already your customers by uh, by uh, by enhancing your professionalism. Um, and but but also when the patient sees that your business and your clinic is on the forefront of technology and on the leading edge of technology, they feel, they feel great comfort in knowing that you're doing the right thing and that you're following um, what, the industry, uh, the, what the industry is doing in terms of trends. So what we're, what we're proposing that we do with Otoscan, traditionally we thought of it as a silicone replacement. Um, and traditionally we only used this process in the delivery component of hearing aid fittings. However, we're suggesting that if you lead with this right, be, right after otoscopy and do this and change your hearing aid workflow and do scans on every new hearing evaluation right after otoscopy, this can actually end up being a strong um, active tool for your clinic. So this will essentially attract more patients, and we've actually we've actually you know proven this. Now look at these ads. These are these are some ads um, that that talk about the same thing, and every country has these same ads: so free hearing tests. You know, talk about new digital technologies, and hey, come get an appointment, right? How do we separate ourselves from that in terms of our messaging? Now. Phonak Lyric, uh, we, we, we have the slide in here because, um, uh, because we really think that um, knowing the contour and the geometry of the ear canal can really help optimize Lyric fittings as well. Um, from a US field trial, they said that 60% of scans were longer than silicone by the same operator. That's, it, that's quite impressive. And then 25% 20, uh, of scans were the same length as silicone by the same operator. And there was up to a seven millimeter difference between silicone and digital scans for Otoscan. So we know we're getting deeper into the ear canal with more comfort. Um, these slides uh, show a Facebook campaign that, uh, a, a, that a business in the Northern Ireland uh, did. And what they did was they showcased the 3D scanning technology on Facebook ads. And they have five clinics that they did with this. Um, they had quite a bit of a reach um, with, you know, you can see on the first one in Belfast, they had 25,000 people reached within uh, five miles of Belfast, meaning they saw the ad. 155 responded to the ad. Okay, so they had, you know, several hundred people that responded to the actual Facebook campaign. Uh, they also did a digital email marketing campaign. Uh, what they realized was that they had 150 actual patients that attended the specific events. They generated 41,000 pounds. Uh, on hearing instruments sold and 2,400 pounds on earwax removals off one Facebook campaign. And that's quite substantial. So that tells us, yes, 3D technology, people are curious, patients are curious of what their ear scan looks like. Uh, I, I liken it to the days of video otoscopy, but even on a whole nother level, because this is um, digital, this is a digital revolution that's uh, a lot of experienced hearing aid patients um, they've been looking forward to this. They've, they've maybe heard about it, uh, but they've also, they also realize how um, uncomfortable and, and painstaking that, that silicone impression process is as well. Okay. So what we're proposing, in terms of the traditional workflow um, that you guys see, you have the hearing tests, and then you create the silicone impressions right before the patient wears the hearing device, uh, well, right before you, you fit the, the hearing device. What we're asking uh, clinics to do, and uh, that is proven to actually um, uh, be of value to clinics, is put Otoslan up front so that the patients can see that, but also your counseling ability for the patients and the proper product will, um, will be greatly enhanced. And, 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 uh, and what, we're, what we hope um, that will prove over time is that this will end up helping generate more revenue for the clinic, but also help retain more, clinic, uh, retain more patients in your clinic as well. <clears throat> so with that, let me show you this uh, quick video. Um, I'm gonna actually fast forward through a lot of it, but I'm gonna show you this video of Otoscan. With the Otoscan, 
a scan of the ear is created by capturing images of reflected laser light to calculate the shape of the surface being scanned. Each of these images create a single slice of 3D information. The patient-worn headset, together with the scanner's tracking cameras, determine where each slice of information was collected. We can then piece together this information to build up the 3D model. The scan is completed in three steps. The canal, the flat surfaces of the outer ear, and the curved surfaces of the outer ear. We use two distinct lasers for each of the three steps. They are called the ring laser and the line laser. We use the ring laser for the curved surfaces of the ear canal, the line laser for the flat surfaces of the outer ear, and the ring laser again to complete the curved surfaces of the outer ear. The scanner interface walks you through the workflow to complete each of these steps. Navigation through this scanning process is managed primarily by clicking the trigger button. The scan starts by setting the depth gauge. This establishes a reference point, which is used for showing the depth. So this is how we could actually tell depth. how far into the ear canal the we will go. The gauge also provides the user with a target scanning depth for consistent outcomes and a warning system for patient safety. And this video is actually um, an uh, older version of the software. So the, the actual live stitching on the right that you see is much quicker and much smoother now. Building in real time. Let's look at a scan in real time. First, you place the headset on the patient's head. And the patient's headset acts as a GPS device for the scanner so that you can go into the ear canal, come out, and continue in the same exact location that you left off. It's a unique dot pattern around the ring. You can see the depth gauge on the left of the display, the video otoscopic view of the ear canal in the middle, and the 3D scan building on the right. The view of the ear canal allows you to see the walls of the ear canal and the eardrum in the distance for safe navigation. The blue line shows where you are capturing data and is used for navigation in the ear canal. When reaching the target depth, the data capture line turns green and an audible signal is heard. As you move out of the ear canal, you can see areas of incomplete data in the 3D scan. The data capture line in the video view and those shown in the 3D scan help you find the correct depth and position to fill any remaining gaps. In the second scanning step, you use the scanner to capture data from the flat surfaces of the outer ear. You point the probe tip at the surface being scanned and position and all of this would be um, a, a process that we go into detail in the training application um, that's embedded onto the desktop of the laptop that you get so you learn how to do this and we talk you through it and we talk you through the science behind the lasers and the angles and the tips on how to get get uh, data collected start up at the top of the ear and then work your way around the conscious sidewall to fill the gap. Now you are ready to review the scan for completeness. You can rotate the 3D scan to view the scan from any position. So what you see on this handheld is exactly what the patients will see on, on the monitor of the computer. Um, we, and we have clinics that actually put it on large screen TV and showcase it up in front. Um, and that's actually really effective in, in, in and keeping the patient engaged as well. Our web portal, AutoCloud, for immediate use in custom product ordering. So that's Otoscan in a nutshell. Um, and that's a great introduction to Otoscan, in my opinion, in terms of you know what it can do for your clinic, but also in terms of in terms of um, in terms of the value it has for the patient as well. Uh, we, we've come a long way with Otoscan. We, we tried to launch it several years back, but we realized we need to develop it more. Now we have a really good commercially viable product. And uh, in, terms of, in terms of accessibility to this product, I would, um, if you have any questions as to how to access it, how to purchase it, if you have any more questions on the device itself, um, you can email myself. And I will connect you with your uh, local uh, country distributor and your country representative so that they can, uh, um, they can give you more information on, um, on how to get the product. 
Um, that's my time. Thank you guys. Thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, I can answer those now. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. I think everybody got a good idea of uh, what Autoscan is. Diana, uh, you there? Uh, can you hear me? You can't hear me? Thank you, Dan. Dan, can you hear me? Hello? I don't think I can hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to... Oh, okay, Dan, everybody can hear me, but you can't. <laughs> I don't know what to do, just, just a little bit. I will see what I can do. It seems like everybody can hear me, but not Dan. So I will write. Anna, do, you have any, uh, do you have any questions that anybody has emailed you? Yes, I do have questions. Uh, I will write a message to him. Uh, I think you're still muted. No, I'm not. Just a second. Did you got my message done? Okay. Maybe everybody. Yeah, I guess I can't hear you. <laughs> no, no. Um, I don't uh, know why I can't hear. I don't know. Uh, I think what we are going yeah, to do see, is... I can see the chat thread. Um, do you want to type the questions here? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, we have a question. Uh, and uh, what is ASP? I just have to write to him. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on. The, the average sales price of the device is um, uh, is set for a capital expense at twelve thousand five hundred euros, um, and that's you know that's that's going to be that, that's going to be dependent on your a local distributor and your local uh, local sales organization there uh, with Autometrics. Um, there is a capital expense of uh, for the equipment. Uh, but I'll also there's a subscription and annual subscription that helps us maintain the auto cloud, um, but also helps uh, give you updates into um, to the actual scanner and and the actual uh, software. Um, that that annual subscription is 1,250 euros a year, um, and your and and that subscription actually pays for the housing of um, all the scans for up to about five years, but also all of the updates. Um, and future updates that you will uh, that you will get on the actual scanner and the ordering system. Um, Canal, how does the software do this? Um, I think what that refers to is uh, how do you how are you scanning the ear canal? Um, the the actual uh, the actual ear canal will be scanned using what we call a ring laser, which is a actually it's not technically a laser. It's a very bright white um, LED light. Um, and the camera that sits in the tip in the probe ends up picking up where that ring laser touches the surface of the ear canal. So when you go into the ear canal, typically um, most ear canals go, uh, go up in direction, uh, up and back. And so what I do, the strategy is uh, gather data from the inferior portion of the ear canal and then tilt the scanner up and then come out and gather the superior portion of the ear canal. Um, depends on the ear canal, of course, but uh, yeah, this is uh, this is def uh, this is generally um, this is generally the method that I use, and that's very effective and efficient. Let's see. How do you look at the ROI point of view for audiologists? The first question is, how fast can we earn this back? Um, well, that's a good that's a good question, and 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 I, I have slides in another presentation. Um, I don't think I have time to share, but what I can do is share with you uh, as well if you email me. But what, what I can what I can tell you is that um, it depends on your on your strategy on how to deploy this. Uh, if you are like Thompson Hearing Center, uh, Hearing Services in Northern Ireland, you will have paid it off within one Facebook campaign. Um, also, if you end up if you if you if you end up generally just not not marketing the device at all, um, and generally maybe getting you know one or two extra sales a month. I think the uh, ROI is about 12 months. 
um, in terms of decreased cost on shipping, decreased cost on uh, cost of silicone, um, decreased time in the chair for remakes uh, for the audiologist and for the provider. Um, all these efficiencies, I, I believe the ROI was around 12 months and I have a calculator that I can share with you. Um, but it really depends on the clinic. If you're if you're really you know just using it as a silicone replacement, you won't make your money back quite as quickly. If you lead with it up front and showcase it, then and then and then we do see that ROI decrease, um, ROI uh, uh, the ROI point decrease. Silicone slightly stretches the ear canal. How does the software do this? That's a great question. Um, over the past decades, hearing aid manufacturers have created what we call offsets uh, for silicone. So different viscosities of silicone do different things to the ear canal and different parts of the ear canal as well. So there's a special algorithm and formula that hearing aid manufacturers, each hearing aid manufacturers have created, and it's their own sauce. It's their own algorithm to create custom products based on the silicone and ear mold impressions um, that stretch and expand in heat, et cetera. So silicone is not really a true representation of the ear canal, whereas at rest, Whereas uh, our Otoscan doesn't touch the ear canal wall at all necessarily um, if you're doing it properly. So it, it actually captures the ear canal data at rest and it is a true representation of the ear canal. However, there still needs to be some offsets created. So each manufacturer in their trials, that's what they do. Um, they use our scanner and they look at fit and uh, they, they modify the offsets based on fit, comfort, and all these other metrics. And that's why it's taken a little bit of time to get these manufacturers onboarded. Um, but one report that I have from uh, some customers directly is that the actual products that go into the canal, I mean, um, you know, like deep canal products are super comfortable. And, and, and that's, I know that's not scientific, but this is just a testimonial from my customers. Um, and they absolutely love the device um, for more than, more than that reason. But uh, they, they really enjoy it and the patients benefit from it. So I think you know I, I, when it comes to when it comes to the actual um, actual final fit of a product, there's a lot of variables at play. I mean, every ear mold lab and every uh, hearing aid manufacturer, is, in essence, create their own special sauce, is what I call it. Um, they'll create their own algorithm to um, to apply to the, the scans. Uh, because we know for hearing protection, it needs to it needs to you know stretch out a little bit more um, for or for uh, different types of um, devices. It's going to have to do different things to different parts of the ear canal. Um, so that's what they've been doing in terms of their trials and, and figuring that special uh, special algorithm out. Um, and I'm excited. I'm, I'm truly excited as a practitioner that's actually uh, in businesses and seeing this make a difference in businesses. Um, and also seeing this make a difference in the patient's pro patient care process. Uh, this is very exciting for me uh, to be a part of this team. Um, and I thank you guys for listening. And if you have any other questions, um, you know, feel free to email me. But otherwise, um, good luck. And uh, let me know if you guys uh, if you guys have any other any other requests. Mariana, I think I think that does it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Uh, I just wrote it to him. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for participating. And Thank you, guys. Uh, I hope to see you again uh, to our next webinar in December. Thank you very much.